Hi everyone, this is Fabi and in today's video we'll talk about bit manipulation and bit masking. More specifically, this video is going to be about the XOR operator or exclusive OR and bit shifting. In the first part of this video we talked about how to use the AND, OR and complement operators to read bits out of registers or write back bits to registers. It's very important to master these early in your career as you're going to use these a lot when working in this field. Additionally, bitwise operations are almost guaranteed to come up in interviews for jobs in this field simply because of how often they are used in day-to-day -day work by embedded developers. If you guys are new around here, this video is part of an educational series I am doing on my channel called Embedded Systems Explained and the aim of this series is to teach you embedded systems concepts in a simple to understand manner and with examples of how you can use them in the real world. So if you haven't checked out any of the other videos, make sure to click on the link which is going to be in the pinned comment down below and that's going to direct you to the playlist of this series. Just like in the first part of this video, you'll hear me refer to values as bit 0, bit 1, bit 2, etc. You should think of these as previously defined constants in your program, so bit 0 would be 0x01, bit 1 would be 0x02, and so all of these have just one bit set to 1, all of the rest are zeros. Additionally, I will mention that we want to read from registers or write to registers, but you should know that you can just as easily use the variables that you defined in your code and do the same things with those variables instead of the registers. So what would we use the XOR operator and bit shifting for? XOR is useful for toggling bits, so if we XOR with the 1, we will always complement the current state of the bit, and bit shifting allows us to change the position of a bit from its current position to another position that we desire. Another less obvious use of bit shifting is the fact that it allows for very efficient multiplication and division if we multiply or divide by a power of 2. Before going in depth and explaining why XORing with the 1 will flip the value of the bit and about bit shifting, let's hear a quick message from today's sponsor, PCBWay. Today's sponsor, PCBWay, is a leading provider of high quality PCB manufacturing and assembly services. The pricing is also extremely competitive and furthermore, if you have an idea for a new project or already have everything developed, PCBWay offers complete manufacturing services from producing PCBs, buying the necessary parts, assembling the PCBs, CNC machining, even 3D printing or injection molding, all the way to final assembly. No matter how complex your project is, PCB Way has got you covered. Click the link in the description to order your PCBs today at a very good price and with fast shipping and also to check out their new services which will allow you to create your own project from the ground up. Okay, so starting off with the XOR operator, it all becomes very clear when we look at the logical table for it. If we XOR with the zero, regardless of the initial value in the register, the result will always stay the same. If we XOR with the 1 on the other hand, regardless of the initial value, the bit will be complemented, which means that we toggled the bit. This is useful in a lot of cases in embedded projects. Let's say you want to toggle an LED whenever a user presses a button. Well, this allows you to do just this very easily. Instead of reading the current state of the LED and then writing back the complemented bit into the register, all we have to do is to XOR the bit in the register with the 1 and that will always accomplish what we want to do, meaning to complement the current state of the bit. Do make sure to like the video if you are finding it useful, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future episodes. These things help me out tremendously on YouTube, so I really want to thank you all. Moving on to bit shifting, at the most basic level we have left and right shifting. We shift left by writing two less than signs followed by the number of positions we want to shift by. Right shifting is done similarly by writing two greater than signs followed by the number of positions we want to shift by. Let's say you're writing a simple program that turns on an LED 
for as long as a user presses a button. Most of the time, even if you don't have the button and the LED on the same port, they will not be on the same bit. This means that we have to shift the bit that corresponds to the state of the button to the position of the LED bit. If the button is connected to P1.2 and the LED is connected to P2.7, we would have to write the code that you can see on the screen right now. Because the difference in position between these two bits is 5, it means that we have to shift by 5 positions and we also use a masking conjunction in order to not copy over the state of other bits. Another good use for bit shifting is to allow for efficient multiplication and division when we multiply or divide by powers of 2. This becomes very intuitive if we do the following exercise. Let's set a variable to the value of 1 and shift it left and then right and see what happens to its binary value. If we shift this variable which has the value of 1 left by one position, it all of a sudden becomes 1,0 binary. And this 1,0 binary means 2 in decimal, which means that we effectively multiply our initial value by 2. If we shift left again by one position, it becomes 1,0,0 binary, which is a 4, so we essentially multiply the value by 2 again. The same thing, but with division, happens if we shift back to the right. Our binary 100 or decimal 4 right shifted by one position becomes 10 binary or 2 decimal. This now means that we divided our variable by 2. If you want to multiply slash divide by 16 for example, which is 2 to the power of 4, we have to shift by 4 positions. If you shift by 5 positions, you are going to multiply or divide by 32, etc. It's good to know that most compilers will automatically implement divisions and multiplications by powers of 2 using left and right shifting as long as the microcontroller has native shifting implemented. With a lot of microcontrollers though, there's internal hardware multiplication units, so the multiplication side of it will most likely not be done through bit shifting. Divisions though take up a lot of compute time, and so with bit shifting, we can speed up these operations and this also means that we increase the energy efficiency of our program. Although it's not absolutely essential to master this when just starting out, I think it's important that you at least hear the fact that most microcontrollers have three types of bit shifting implemented. The first one is logical shifting, the second one is arithmetic shifting, and the third one is rotating. You can think of logical shifting as the traditional shifting operator, what we talked about until now. Arithmetic shifting, on the other hand, has to do with how we represent negative numbers in microcontrollers and what happens to them when we multiply or divide through bit shifting. A signed number that is negative will always have the most significant bit set to 1, whereas a signed number that is positive will always have this most significant bit set to 0. In order to not change the sign of a number when doing operations like shifting, arithmetic shifting will make sure that the most significant bit will remain the same when shifting bits around. Let's start off talking about rotation by taking a look at what happens to an 8-bit variable when we shift it by 8 positions. The result of this would be 0 every time. This is because we simply lost all of the bits while shifting. With rotate, when a bit is about to fall off at one end, it is simply inserted back at the other end. This essentially means that if we rotate an 8-bit variable by 8 positions, we will simply end up with the same value that we started with. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video useful. In the description down below, you will find links to today's sponsor, PCBWay, and to the MSP430 launchpad, which I think will offer everyone a great start into the embedded world. Stay tuned, I'll catch up with you in the next video.